or uh, baseball talk. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> he should, yeah, what? well, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> what? Oh, what? Wait, my, my, my ankle's out. You can't record yet. <sighs> oh, God. Okay. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. Oh, Matt. In five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to the second episode of the Gem City Pennant Podcast Baseball Edition. Boys, how are we? Hey, and ladies. We're doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Dom. How are you, bud? Wonderful. I'm a bit... I'm a bit under the weather. I had to call in sick today from the prison, but um, we scheduled this. A schedule is a schedule. I'm going to sound a little bit nasally. He's going to sound That's more right. uh, more Morgan Freeman. It's going to be okay. It's going. It's not gonna, the people just listening and not watching. It's going to sound great. For the people that are watching, I'm sorry, Zach is still here. Oh. And and today we will talk about the <laughs> baseball. <laughs> it sounds like BBC now. <laughs> <laughs> so Zach was just talking about uh, Garrett Cole. How's he doing today? He's actually getting roughed up quite a bit. Um, What's the stat line? He is. Let me find it. Let me go. Um, four innings, five hits, three earned runs, a walk, still seven strikeouts. Did give up a homer, um, but they've just been. He's throwing about 80 pitches in four innings. Um, I'm Against hoping, the Rangers, of all people. Yeah, I know. I'm hoping he gets – hopefully the Yankees get back up to an even ball game so I don't take a loss today. Um, not great. Um, I, I'm hoping – I mean, I've, I have Garrett Cole twice this week, so um, it would suck if he sucks <laughs> game one. Um, <laughs> yeah, it would suck if he sucks. That makes no, sense. That's, that's, that's the title. Yeah, of Garrett Cole striking out the, the Rangers that I don't want him to strike out. <laughs> Joey Gallo, Nate Lowe. <laughs> so it's kind of a wash. Because okay. you get the strikeouts, but I also have those those fellas this week. So how are the other Rangers doing? Because I have I'm starting two of them tonight. Which one? Uh crap! Who's on my team? I got Nick Solak and the other dude, the one I just picked up from Dalton. Nick Solak, Dallas Garcia. Yes, him. Uh, Nick Solak, zero for two with a strikeout, and Garcia is one for two with one hit and one RBI. I I believe he hit the homer. Oh, okay. Well, or, yep, he hit the homer. I picked up Schwarber this morning in his oh, yeah. um, return to Wrigley. Nice. Popped a homer earlier he while I was cooking. Sh- he, I was like, yes! he, pop- he popped a Schwarber. Shore, a shore bomb. A shore bomb. Shore pretty bomb. Impressive. So what? Mm-hmm. He, did, he, he went oppo. It was pretty impressive. Yeah, he yeah, did. He did go oppo. It's not about Wrigley, man. It makes old players be good, which is terrible. I just watched some dude named Webb out of the Atlanta bullpen smoke Kevin PR right in the face and he just started gushing like spraying blood out of his nose on on live television. All right. Pretty great. Uh, are you Garrett, watching a Garrett baseball Cole, game or a hockey game? Pitches. What's that? 74 pitches through four innings for Garrett Cole. Nice, nice, nice. Man, I need to I wish I was a little bit more prepared. My apologies. I took a one hour nap. Oh um naps are lethal for Dalton, let's be real here. Yeah, that's true. I'm gonna say is Zoom contagious because the last podcast I got super sick and I had a call in sick to work the following day. I don't know if Dalton caught it for me or what happened. Can you can you count it or catch it over Zoomitis? Zoomitis. <laughs> oh, that, that Zoomitoid that arthritis. arthritis. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> what just happened? Oh, Zachary. Um, Garrett Cole just gave up another shot to Calhoun. Oh, wait, wait. Are you talking about my College World Series boy, Calhoun, or a different no. one? No. Oh, wait, yeah, he's a Diamondback, my bad. Dang. Well, with that, we'll take a, a brief day one uh, scoreboard check. I'm up 15-2 to two on Zach Weller. Matthew is up 17-1 to negative one on Steve. Uh, LaFon's getting his ass whooped by Chris Thompson, 35-4. to four. <laughs> Oof. Zach is currently down 26 to 16 to Dickie Jitters. Not bad. And Bill is currently winning 30 to 10 over Pat Brown. Put that, put that in the record books because it's not going to happen the rest of this week. Oh, Josh, you just went up to five, so it, it's getting better. 
Well, um, since literally the only thing we talked about last episode, since this was turned out to be a two-parter, was my topics. Where do we want to? <laughs> where do we want to start this bad boy? Um. Mm. Well, I mean, if question. if I'm picking, then uh, all right, Bill. Uh, your first topic on the board is baseball hero. Ba- yes, I just want to yeah. know. Growing up today. Has it, if it's changed, who's been your baseball hero out of the four men? And then anyone obviously listening, please, in the comments below of the YouTube channel or in the Facebook, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, baseball hero. And if you want, why? But that's kind of on you. If you're also using the fire method, please send a smoke signal. We will gra- gladly appreciate yes, that. Yes, Matt, Matt, the certified Eagle Scout, can, dis- can decode it. So, so in- instead of dropping it in – the in the comments, comments you drop it in the cloud in the sky mm-hmm. da, 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 da. yep well hey. bill um since this is your your topic go ahead and uh, fire it up first my hero has always been and always will be mr ryan howard i met that man he was a gentleman uh not so much well he's a scholar he's a scholar but he was a big teddy bear and i loved him and also seeing him in the office when he says eat fresh every 10 seconds made my day. So Mr. Ryan Howard for me, for the Phillies back when they won the World Series when I was a freshman in high school, I didn't get to go to that parade because I was too little, but that's okay. It'll not happen again, but I'm looking forward to it. The year the Phillies won the World Series, 2008, Ryan Mm -hmm. Howard was second in MVP voting. Mm -hmm. He played 162 games, led the NL in home runs and RBIs. Mm -hmm. Career 125 OPS hitter. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, He he had an MVP, rookie of the year, Mm -hmm. uh, silver slugger. He was good. He's borderline Hall of Famer. Yeah. I mean, not – if this was the football Hall of Fame, he'd be in. Yeah, but baseball is – Way different. He might. May, may, he may. Maybe, He's not making but it. No, like, uh, compared to a lot of the other other guys, no. Um, See, he retired in 2016, so this will be the mm-hmm. first year he's eligible, I believe. Is it, okay. I think. But, I mean, I'd vote for him. There's a lot of other better players, but for someone, obviously, quote-unquote, from Philadelphia, it was great seeing him all the time. He was just a good character. And, you know, first baseman, you see him, he's like, yep, yeah, there's Ryan Howard. Boom. You know, when he was in, he was one of the most solid first basemen of the league during that time, in my opinion. But he played all 13 season for your fight in Phils. He did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Playing uh, first base the whole first, time. First base the whole time. Either that or DH. Yeah. Let's see, he again. played a St. Louis, Missouri, mm-hmm. born November 19th, 1979. Let's see. He also led the NL in strikeouts twice, which is not something you really want to do. However, yeah, in 2006, no, started swinging. His MVP year, he hit 58 bombs. He That's did. That's crazy. When when he connected, it was going. It, like it wasn't like, oh, we might get a single or double. It was either a hit or a strikeout, and when it was a hit. Mm-hmm. It was a home run every time, which was great when he hit. But when he didn't, you're like, oh, well, there's an out. But Zachary, I, as you're not the uh, like, since you're one of the newer baseball fans, do you want to go next, or would you like to go last? I can go last. I, <laughs> I think I know the answer for you, but I don't know if that's going to be your answer. Well, let's see. Let's hear it. I thought. I think you're going to say Kutch. I do love uh, McCutcheon. He's <laughs> um, when he was in Pittsburgh. I mean, I, I, I'm not. A, I don't have a uh, favorite baseball team. Um, never have, maybe I never will. We'll, we'll, we'll find out until um, Wyoming has one. Yeah. At least at this point in my life. I mean, I just enjoy watching baseball, uh, best sport. I, I do enjoy watching players. Um, mm-hmm. but I can totally understand bill with, with, uh, Ryan Howard being a, a Philly fan. And, um, mm-hmm. I'm listening to some podcasts. Uh, they were talking about Albert Pujols, um, mm. And like uh, NBC Sports is based in St. Louis, and like a lot of those guys are in the St. Louis area. And they were like when Pujols got released by the Angels this week, they were going back and talking about when he was uh, when he was at the Cardinals and how like like 
that player, like when that city was just such a huge impact, like, mm-hmm. and they talk about like his stats, like his first 10 years in St. Louis were just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, that's definitely, I mean, one of the players I remember the most, I mean, Poole has been around for freaking ever. Years. Yeah. Um, yeah. His stats are absolutely ridiculous for yeah. the first mm-hmm. 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, 408 home runs in his first 10 years. That's a 41 home run average, 1,230 RBIs, 1,900 hits, 331 batting average, 1.050 OPS in his first 10 years. I think, yeah, he was, he was a career, uh, first 10 years, a 330 mm-hmm. hitter. And I think, and they were talking about like how sad it's not. I think he, he dipped under a career 300 hitter. That's how bad the last few years. <laughs> yeah. Don't quote me on that, but he might be. 298. In- yeah, two nine. Yeah, they said when his two nine eight his average went to two ninety eight. Um, a lot of those fans, it just sung. I mean, he's a career three thirty hitter for the longest time, and mm-hmm. then fell off. I mean, um, I'm gonna watch a lot more baseball over the course of my lifetime. Um, eat a lot more hot dogs. Eat a lot more hot dogs. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. No, no, definitely it wasn't enjoy a bad thing. To, definitely enjoy going to different ballparks and seeing different teams play, um, and seeing what those. Um, mm-hmm. Most fans are like, um, but no, no player stands out um, too much. Obviously, like um, we remember, like the Bonds era um, towards the end of I don't. his career. Um, <laughs> well, I guess I'm older, um, but um, but just seeing all those, like how the games changed. Like we talked about it last week, the analytics and everything. Um, yeah, but just seeing like there's not as many big big bombers anymore. I feel like, I mean, there's still some guys like uh, Mike Trout's going to be one of those guys that we're going to talk about for a long, long time. Uh, Cunha. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Cunha. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. He's super talented. Uh, oh, he just dropped the ball by the way. Mm-hmm. But, uh, <laughs> I'm watching the game right now. I was like, yep. Oh, yeah. there was. <laughs> but, I mean, um, I, I'm Speaking still waiting to see that, um, that person in my life that makes me really love baseball, but I just, I just enjoy baseball. Um, for the fun yeah. of the game, and everybody's got to have a band in their life, Zachary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he's uh, whiskey, whiskey, uh, <laughs> whiskey. What's everybody drinking on tonight? Before we get to the last, oh two? yeah, we can do that at the beginning. I can guess oh. Matthews. I know that for sure, but we'll let him share. All right. Wait. So, are we doing baseball player or drink? Do you drink what first, you drink and then we'll do baseball. Okay. Yeah. So, I was gonna say just because I don't. I don't have as many uh, beers or anything as often as I used to. I save it for special occasions, but I would like to make a shout out to the man, Arnold Palmer. Oh, the man. Arizona makes the best uh, yep. tea lemonade combinations and mm-hmm. it's a lot better for my tummy. So I love drinking those. So cheers to you gentlemen. Amen to that. Wild Turkey 101 classic. Um, something just to sip on. Tangare and uh, tonic water for me. I'm drinking the uh, the official tea of the Boston Red Sox. Ooh, was it dumped in the harbor? Tea. Yes, it, it was pre pre dipped, pre dumped in the harbor. Harbor. Well, Habba. I think I have would have like. To... Go ahead, Matt. Does your does your car have smart pack? Is there smart pack? <laughs> <laughs> I think I would smart. like to hammer out my uh my player that uh really made me so i've got one who like was the first name i could recognize and then one who very obviously made me love baseball um Mm -hmm. and matt i'm sure has a lot more memory so i figured i'd go next um the first baseball player i recognized and like really loved was matt kemp Mm -hmm. for the dodgers 27 yep. played the outfield mm-hmm. fell off at the very end of it like way that. too soon but yeah they all fall he, he actually still played last year for the rockies and he actually did surprisingly well for the rockies like he was starting for quite a while and that's the perfect, he was on my fantasy team last year that's the perfect mm-hmm. spot for him dh at coors field yeah yeah <laughs> oh, now. yeah i agree just straight bombs yeah which is why I don't but know why the, well, Pujols didn't go there. DH at, at uh, Coors. It's because they're bad. Yeah, he also wanted to win. <laughs> yeah, Officially yeah. Officially for Dalton and I, I was hoping he'd sign with the Cardinals this week just so we can catch him. I was hoping mm-hmm. that, but it, it didn't pan out. It didn't happen. 
But the player who really made me like watch, watch baseball, like I, I liked it and I thought of Kemp, but I actually wore Kemp's number when I was in Little League. But uh, the player who made me like really fall in love with it was Kershaw. It's pretty obvious. Mm, yeah. Dude, Clayton, yeah. That's I don't even need to elaborate no, on that. No, it's just, it's just Clayton, baby. That's just it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> hey, hey, Bill, I think if you scoot over, uh, Zachary's also in the picture. No, he's not. I wish oh, he was. No. no, I wish he was. There's a, there's a little treat for the YouTube watchers. Mm-hmm. I'm not even going to spoil it for you guys. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Some hair. yeah, that was the last of it. Holy that God, was the last. I know. So young. We were so young. But yeah, so if you're watching, if you're just listening on the uh, podcast, please hop over to YouTube. Again, like, comment, subscribe. You know the deal. We hear from everybody else. I You'll like how this, everyone this, who's on the uh, Zoom call is suddenly like zoomed in. Like, just, yeah, people. just yeah. trying to look at the hairline. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Matthew made with that hair. Matt, yeah. what's your favorite player? Hold on. Get, let me get it up. There we go. There it is. All right. Oh. Okay. All right. Much. My. My guy who made me absolutely love baseball. I don't, Zachary, no. <laughs> I'm going to prove you wrong right now, and I'll, I'll tell you why. No, no, you hit him, Matt. Hit him with the facts, Matt. All right. My favorite player of all time, easily Todd Helton. And I know everyone wants to make the Coors Field argument for him, but the thing is the insane numbers he was putting up during the steroid area. 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 Era, mm-hmm. well, a lot of area. Without – steroids is just absolutely insane i know everyone wants to say coors field but literally no one else no other colorado rocky like hit the numbers or batting averages that he had like can i just name one year real quick Mm -hmm. go for it matt so in the year 2000 when todd was 26 years old so this is absolutely insane to think about now so he had 42 home runs which of course when you're going against like bonds and jeff kemp and all them you know it's not going to get you you know, close to the MVP or anything. Mm-hmm. 42 home runs is a pretty good year, right? Yeah. Absolutely. I would say absolutely, yeah. All right. So he also hit 147 RBIs that year. And lastly, sorry, sorry for the awkward silence. I wait for the <laughs> reaction, but this batting average is like the most insane, like, batting average I've ever heard to finish out a season. He hit 372 through a full season and only finished wow. fifth in the MVP voting. Wow. It's absolutely that's, insane. Like That is. That, no, that's a good year. Like, I, was a, I know, like, there have been some Rockies batting champs over the years, like LeMahieu and Justin Morneau and Kadire and some of them, but no one's ever going to get close to 372. And, this, and he did it all without steroids, which I think is even mm-hmm. more amazing. But, of course, being – a former unfortunate Rockies fan and going to games. He was one of the bright spots. We're going to, and I even got to see his final game at Coors Field where he blasted a home run almost to the second deck in right field. So it was like the perfect way to finish off a career. So that is, I can go on awesome. all day, but I'll, I'll end it there just because Todd Helton, I hope he gets to the Hall of Fame. Larry Walker made it, which is cool, but mm-hmm. I, I don't know. Unfortunately, he has Coors Field against him and the Rockies being just an incompetent team operated every day. So. <laughs> Also true. Yep. Said it, not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, and my, my second I do, topic. I do love going to Coors oh. Field. I love the experience of Coors Field. Coors is flawless. Uh-huh. Before we move on. Yeah, Coors Field's amazing. I'm it's sorry. I was, I'm just trying to get this oh. point in here real quick. <laughs> yeah, hit it. Before we move on to Bill's second topic, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to two players. Kike Hernandez activated off the IL t- for tomorrow's game. Glad to hear he's happy or healthy. Happy, healthy. And healthy I hope he's happy. He, he had his Cheerios. That's why. And David Price activated off the IL today. Oh, very nice. Yay. Very wow. good player. Cy Young Award. Mm-hmm. Good All right. picture. So, Bill? a quick little side note. So, Dalton mm-hmm. and Matt are going to St. Louis to watch a Rockies St. Louis game. Um, no. No. Ro- Rockies and no. No. St. Louis and St. Phillies. Louis? No, I don't know. No. <laughs> Cubs. <laughs> Cubs. Oh, oh really? Oh, that's Cardinals why Cubs. The, the whole Cub debate was going on. Okay, I get it. Now. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. How many stadiums have you guys been to? Quickly, if you remember. That's like, going to be one of my questions. I had that. Oh, what a hat, Matt! Give me just a second. 
Who knows off the top of their head? Go ahead. So we're, we're not saying we're not we're not saying games. We're saying specific different, stadiums. Different games. Okay, I'm at two. I'm at two, two stadiums. stadiums. Uh, Coors, Coors Field, and then you're blurred out. Yeah, I know. I, I gotta blow this out because this is a shit show back here. I found out I'm going to uh, freaking Sheridan tomorrow. I found out four o'clock. So your boys packing, and this is a mess. This is this is bad. So yeah, for me, it's been uh, Phillies and Rockies. That's it. But I hope to change that very soon. So, Matt, uh, do spring training games count? No. Dang it. Okay. So I was gonna, I would have added Oakland A's to that, but let's see. I've been to Coors Field, Wrigley, and then Bush Stadium on Saturday as long as my Ooh. Southwest Airlines flight gets there on time and safely. <laughs> yeah, here's hoping. Please strap in to and uh, read. You, you have they, your six exits, two forward, two middle, two aft. I fucked that up so bad. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Bill. Oh, I, ha- oh, I, had the, <laughs> I had the – I had the – the warm up, I just couldn't yeah. connect on that bad boy. <laughs> Speaking of connecting, Florence. Uh, all right. So on Saturday, that will be my fifth. Um, oh wow! It was my very first ever was um, Petco Park in San Diego. Mm-hmm. It was like a week after I graduated high school. The tickets were like eighty six dollars for two tickets plus parking in like uh, first baseline, second tier, like where it, it was great. Man, ain't inflation a bitch. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> they were bad, too. The Padres were bad at the time. Wow. And then uh, it was the Target Field in Minneapolis, the Twins game. Uh, we were behind the plate, way up, like top deck. Uh, I was mm-hmm. there with a bunch of family, my grandma, and stuff like that. And then Coors Field. I've been there twice. Once on the first baseline, once on the third. Mm-hmm. Wrigley with you guys, mm-hmm. and then Bush. Nice, uh, wow. I, Zach. Um, Coors, mm-hmm. Bush, Wrigley, Kaufman, and Kansas City just recently. Oh, uh, nice. And Safeco. Safeco. Yeah. You go to Seattle. Is that Seattle? Yep. Gotcha. Yeah, that was when I was dating Samantha. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Long, long time ago. Sarah, I'm sure listening. there's no pictures she of that. Has, she has long been out of Zachary's life. But um, I, I, I want to make it to Miller Stadium because I want to make it to Coors, Bush, and Miller. Miller? <laughs> Get all the beers. <laughs> Get all the beers. I've been Miller Stadium three times, but I haven't been there yet. If they, uh, ever make uh, a, if they ever make a Yingling Stadium, I'm there all the time. I'm, we're moving. I'm telling Aubrey we're moving. I don't care. We're going to Yingling Stadium. I don't care. The tickets for Miller Park are really not that bad. It's just the flights to um, Milwaukee. Oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah that's, Milwaukee. That's bad. My brain does not work today. No, I, they're, they're a little sick. expensive. Yeah, he wants to go to Wisconsin in May. That's a little chilly. I've been to yeah, some, that's a been some pretty yucky May games in Wrigley mm. and in Coors, Kansas City. Oh, Kansas City, <laughs> really cold games. Mm-hmm. Zach came when it was super cold. But then, like a week later, we were getting tornadoes. So I don't know. <laughs> you got you got out in time, Zach. Yeah, I can't take you serious. I've never seen you in another sports gear besides Denver, and I'm like, <laughs> this is weird, Matt. <laughs> I go get my cup stuff. Ooh, do we do we all have cup stuff? Can we take a two second break before I ask my next question. Put on my cup like gear. Down and cup stuff. We'll, do that, uh, we'll do that. We'll do that at a break. Yeah. Yep. So the next question I had is kind of a two parter. But your first baseball game slash your favorite baseball stadium that you've been to. Not game. Doesn't matter who won. Don't care. Favorite stadium you've been to. And I shall not go first because uh, everybody knows my answer already. So we're going to go with Matt going first. Fav- oh, first on. You're going to ask two questions there. You yeah. So your first game you've been to? No, no. First question is favorite uh, – your first baseball game. And the second question is your favorite stadium – that you've ever seen a game in, period. All right. So I think my favorite game I ever been to it wasn't the Helton one because the Red Sox beat the Rockies like 14 to 2 that day. And mm-hmm. the two RBIs were by Todd Helton, coincidentally. But mm-hmm. I think my first game I ever oh oh wait, hold on. My favorite yeah, first game. game. First no, first game you ever went to and favorite stadium that you went okay. to. Okay. All right, first game I ever went to it was 2001 Colorado Rockies against the Arizona Diamondbacks. And Ooh. 
This game was noteworthy because Wyoming native Mike Lansing hit the quickest cycle in MLB history, doing it in just four innings. Casper, what's wow. his name? Mike Lansing. 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 So L A N S I N G. Mm-hmm. Played from 93 to 2001. Wow. Yeah. Eight years. It's not bad. Yeah, so he's, I think he was born in Rollins, actually. Casper is where he went to high school, born in Rollins. Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, Mike Lansing hit the quickest cycle in MLB history, and then Helton hit a home run, too, and the Rockies won by the final score. I might be wrong. It was 21-4, to just, uh, just one of those old, old wow. first field games. Just, it was yeah. just absolutely insane. Pride of uh, Wichita State University. Wichita State. Coincidentally, the airport I'm flying out of Saturday morning. Career 84 OPS hitter, so he was not good. Um, <laughs> but back in, like, m- for most of baseball history, there are people who would stay around for way too long in the game just mm-hmm. because once you make, like, the 40-man roster, you can be on any team anywhere because they don't want to yeah. use service time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the minor so, league. Yeah. Yeah. So, Matt, your favorite stadium now? Oh, yeah. So, my favorite stadium, I just, I got to go Wrigley. I think just the history with it, the Oregon, the uh, absolute chilly windstorm that came in where Dalton, Zach, Spencer, and I were all huddled together underneath this <laughs> blanket that this kind fan actually behind us gifted to us partway through. Wow. The so, oh, yeah. I, 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 yeah, I think, yeah, going to that game at Wrigley, I think with the boys was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Even though Spencer left us early. <laughs> That's what Spencer does, though, let's be real. <laughs> Spencer's like, I've been to nine, nine or ten Wrigley games. I'm going to the bar, guys. I'll see you later. Look, all right, I, see you. I just told him, I was like, I flew halfway across the country. I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, Dalton, Zach, which one? Well, I guess I'll go. Um, my first ever game was 2012. Uh, Padres Diamondbacks I've seen the Diamondbacks play way more times than I actually thought because we saw the Diamondbacks at Wrigley too and then I saw the Diamondbacks at uh, Coors as well I believe but anyway um, I actually finally pulled up I found the date of the game for that my first ever game and I don't remember which what it is anymore (laughs) it was sometime in uh, June of 2012 but mm-hmm. um, the Diamondbacks won. I do remember that. And my favorite stadium has got to be Coors. Just the atmosphere mm-hmm. is amazing. The, the strip after the game, mm-hmm. holy shit, that's fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The food around the stadium, insane. Just the whole atmosphere of that area is great. Mm-hmm. Um, so my first ever game was late. I was in college. Matt and I went to that game together. It was that UW. Um, trip down there. Remember that, Matt? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Tim Lincecum was there. Yeah, Tim the Lincecum Giants. was pitching for the Giants. The Giants won the World Series that year. Wow. Um, so it was crazy watching Lincecum pitch. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. And that was like Lincecum, like when he was kind of at the mm-hmm. tail end, too, but he still did pretty well. No good. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, like Coors is great. Um, um, like, like Dalton was saying, like the food and like, like Blake, uh, was it Blake Street? Um, or Blake Avenue, or whatever street is right outside. Coors. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, like there's so there's so many things going on. Funny story, um, which I assumed majority mm-hmm. of baseball stadiums was like that because Wrigley was pretty close like that. There was a lot of stuff down there. Mm-hmm. Um, St. Louis is kind of like that. Um, it is Blake Street. Yeah, so not like St. Louis is like that, but not 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 as much. Um, mm-hmm. But when we, when Sarah and I went to Kauffman Stadium to watch the Royals play, we we just assumed it was going to be like that. Like there was gonna, like we were we got a, we bought a parking pass and we're like sweet we're going to buy a parking pass we're going to just park in the stadium and just walk around walk go everywhere food go find shops. Mm-hmm. We pull in we pull into Kauffman Stadium, which is the same parking lot as Arrowhead Stadium, and so you see it it's huge and we're like, we're we're driving into this place and we're like we feel like we're driving out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> And we pull into the parking lot. It is just Kauffman Stadium and Arrowhead Stadium in this gigantic parking lot. There's no shops. There's no nothing. 
And once we pulled in, we ha- we had our parking pass scanned and we couldn't leave. And so we were there like hours before the game and we weren't pre- preparing for that. Um, oh, man. <laughs> so we just walked around Kauffman Stadium and Arrowhead like – like reading the plaques and just like walking around. But I just assumed wow. it was like every other stadium I've been to that there was mm-hmm. nope. And based on fun. Google maps, it truly is out in the middle of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's just a major intersection on I-70 just next yep. to a major intersection. And that's it. Yep. It was, it was it's just literally down the road for me, isn't it? It was a little disappointing mm-hmm. to say the least, but well, let's see, yeah. there's a Taco Bell and a Denny's. Why don't you do that? Yeah. Everyone wants to go to Denny's at three in the afternoon. Yeah, get some pancakes for a baseball game. That's what you want. And you might get an angry waitress that might throw coffee on you, too. But needless to say, uh, Coors, like, the atmosphere is just great down there. Um, well, Wrigley was close, too. Wrigley was mm-hmm. a great ball. Gr- Wrigley's great, too. All right. Well, my first baseball game, don't remember the date. I was too little. Don't remember who we were playing or if we even won. I don't care. I was sitting there with my hot dog at uh, – Liberty Stadium, not Liberty Stadium. What the hell is it called? Veterans. Yeah, Veterans Stadium. Thank you. Good Lord. Uh, the field. There's too much. There's too much gin in this gin and tonic. Um, go home, but, I yeah, I'm gonna go. Bye. Woo. Um, no, we went went there first game. I was I think I was eight nine, but we we're sitting like I remember we we're sitting behind third plate up top in that second row, and a ball almost came and knocked me in the face. It was great. It was great. If it wasn't for that glass, oh man, I'd have died. But that was the first game. I remember I got to see my Ryan Howard from across the way. I was like, look at that big, beautiful black man. I want to be him. And then I realized I didn't, I didn't know how to play baseball, so I didn't do it. Uh, but that was fun. But, yeah, best stadium for me, though, I I, I got to be Philly. I'm sorry. I love Coors. It's gorgeous. But the smell of Philly, the smell of cheesesteak <laughs> and piss, back to back, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. I don't care. You can't beat it. Citizen Bank, Aubrey no? just walked in and just looked at me like I'm insane. <laughs> have Aubrey join in for a second. Yeah, yeah. Join in real quick. What? First baseball game you went to and the best stadium you've ever been to. So, Bill, move out of the way. Put Aubrey in the middle so we can see her. Yeah, you got you to gotta, you gotta do the thing. Because th- you can actually talk in. Hi. Hi, Hi friends. Hi. Oh. Um, okay, so first baseball game. Oh, Jesus. Hello. <laughs> okay, there she is. <laughs> First baseball game I ever went to. I don't remember who it was, but it was my freshman year of high school. I went with the Knicks, uh, went to see the Rockies. Mm-hmm. And okay. what was the second question? Favorite baseball stadium you've ever been to? Um, like been inside or been to? Two. Two. Wrigley. Okay, cool. Good talk, guys. Okay. Thanks for popping in. Oh my god, everyone was talking at the same time. Sorry, what? <laughs> All right, so I want to bring up my favorite game. Other one was that one where Ian Desmond hit the ball to Utah. Do you remember oh, shut that? the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first curve for You gotta bring, you gotta bring that up, Matt. Yeah, time, time to drink. drink. I need to get <laughs> I didn't break the silence this time. Yeah, it was I, Aubrey. I, I don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I ran out of gin. Do you want to top off? Would you, would you, would you mind? Wow. Huh? I pay you tomorrow for a gin and tonic today. <laughs> Wait, you're paying Aubrey? No. Bill. No, d- don't you, you ever see Popeye when um, uh, Tuesday goes, I'll pay you gladly for a cheeseburger tomorrow for a cheeseburger today? You ever remember that? No. Are you talking like old Popeye cartoons? Or? Yeah, yeah, old Popeye. I just remember spinach and. <laughs> <laughs> and it grows up there's a there's a train going or something yeah i remember that uh, there's like an anchor yeah he was, he was in the navy i think yeah all right the last question i have last question and this is purely for fun if you don't remember that's all right but the most you paid for a parking spot at a baseball game <laughs> and I, i'm i'm guessing zach won this thing with that parking pass 80 bucks for aubrey apparently can we be 80 80 80 80 17. I think, the, I think the most I pay was about 40, maybe 50, maybe. It's the first time I've ever paid for a parking spot. I've only done it once as well. Oh, okay. I think, I think the most I paid was like $34. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't worth it because there was no shops there. No. Yeah. <laughs>
I think the most I paid was about 40, 50 bucks, but that was because I went with a uh, lady friend to Coors Field and she insisted on parking close. So, Because she a hoe, exactly. Anyway, oh. that's why okay. that lady's not in this life anymore. Anyway. And with that. Rest and with that, uh, not, next on in the Google Doc we have, <laughs> on the Google Doc we have is form the titty committee. So I think it's t-shirt time. We'll take a quick break for Dalton to take off his shirt, and we're good to go. What? What? <laughs> I was waiting for Schoolboy Q to come in and roast me, but it didn't happen. All right. We are back. Matthew is currently away, but that is okay. Uh, Zach's wife took, came in for a brief appearance during the break, and uh, right when I was getting ready to fire up the, uh, the podcast again for her to make fun of Bill, she dipped out. So that's She just right. left. It's fine. Yeah. She's right here. I went to go get whiskey. Oh. Oh, there it oh, is. Okay. Oh, get, get the whiskey. Cheers. <laughs> Just poured myself some Wyoming whiskey. Ooh. Finished my tea. I'm, um, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Wyoming whiskey helps with a cold and or sickness. So. It that tastes pretty ale. herbal. So. Oh, yeah. Ginger ale and nothing else. So. Let's see. The Edwin best. Diaz is coming up to pitch to close this bad boy out. In Atlanta, bottom of the ninth. Uh, I'm, so watch, I'm, I'm just watching the Cubs game, if I'm honest. And they're, they're winning, so I'm happy. Yeah, they were up last time I checked, huh? Yeah, it's 6-3 at the moment. All right. Um, well, I didn't really think – Matt didn't really think this one through very much because his nope. topics are next. Um, Zach, looks like you just – Jumped ship. No. Somebody no. else put a comment in there for you. The I only have, thing I have to fear is Billiam himself. I have not opened the Google sheet whatsoever. Oh, okay. <laughs> somebody, somebody put that in there for you. The only thing you have to fear is Billiam himself. So I guess while we're waiting for Matt, I will talk about my topic that I added um, just the other day when I was bored at work. So I, I broke down every day of the season so far to see who had the highest uh, point total in one day every week. Not me. That's for damn sure. Yeah, so it's not been you at all, Bill? No, uh, not at all. Been, it, funny enough, it's actually been Matt, Zach, and I the whole season. Really? Wow. Every week. So, week one, Matthew, on April 6th, had 104 points in one day. His wow. best hitter being Pete Alonzo and his best pitcher being Freddie Peralta of the Milwaukee Brewers. Week two was once again Matthew. As you know, he has a very good record. On April 13th, seven days later, he had 130 points in one day, which was the record at that time. Jesus. Um, Paul Goldschmidt had 10 and Trevor Bauer had 32. Mm. Week three, Zachary got in the mix. April 24th, 125 points. So five off of the uh, all-time score for the year so far. He had Matt Olson for six, Garrett Cole for 32, and Brady Singer for 29. That was the last time Brady Singer knew how to not walk someone. So, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. And then week four, I broke the record. No, I did not break the record. But I did lead that week, uh, April 26th. 95 points in one day. Freddie Freeman, 10 points. Anthony Desclafani, 37. And then week five, Matthew, May 7th. Once again, led it. That's three weeks so far this year. 96 points. He had three batters tied with six. And then Jack Flaherty with 28 points. Jack Flaherty is uh, way up there on the pitch wins list right now. So that makes sense. I think he's 7 or no. Is he? 6-0 or 7-0. One of the two. Mm. So, um, let's see. Week six, which was this last week, which is when I took the all-time daily score record so far for this season. I didn't calculate from last year, but I can eventually. Um, 152 points in one day. Wow. 
May 13th. I had Austin Meadows go off for 11. Anthony Desclafani once again for 23. And Zach Plesak took a no-hitter into the eighth inning with uh, 22 points. Damn. Yep. So well, what do you what do you what do you say would be your success in fantasy? Would it be the the mad approach, the rotating of pitchers? Would it be selecting guys when they're hot, or would it be the what were we talking about, quote unquote, last week, the the new average that you guys were suggesting? Uh, um, pitchers is the key. Pitchers. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which is why I'm only four and two because my pitchers have sucked. You're telling me, bud. I mean, that, to be honest, looking at last week's, that's what screwed me out of a win. Matt keeps uh, his name. Matt's listening. Um, but who is yelling? <laughs> who is yelling? I don't know. If anyone's yelling? That's anyway. Aubrey. Oh, <laughs> y'all can hear that? Oh, damn. Yeah. Well, well, hold up. Matthew, if you don't get in here quickly, we're gonna have to cut into another break. Would be really, which would be really oh, he's embarrassing. Back. Oh, Matt, there oh, he is. Oh, he's got the Cub gear out too. Dang. Ooh. Cubs and KU yeah. and KKU. Wow. I don't know where my Cub shirt went. I, th- I thought we were all changing. We didn't have time. I was given a gin and tonic. I set my ass down. So, oh, <laughs> that's a, that's a curse. Never mind. Drink it. Sorry, the uh, dogs wanted to run after a squirrel, so I had to chase them. Down the yard uh, hey, uh, squirrel <laughs> what a great movie yeah, oh, great movie all right matthew uh go ahead and take over the mc privileges and walk us through your mm-hmm. topics matthew right, lebowski right. henderson yes matthew lebowski henderson i love it okay so i think the first thing i just wanted to ask you guys it wasn't really about fantasy baseball or anything like that but I think the question I have here is what do we all love about baseball? Like what's our favorite thing about it? So is there anybody who wants to start or should I go for it? Uh, I, I'll start actually. All right, go for um, it. As, as someone who has frequented, frequented, yeah, that's the word, uh, many uh, array of different uh, sport venues. I haven't gone to a football game, so I, I can't say that, but yeah. baseball, soccer, basketball, volleyball, you name it the best atmosphere is always at a baseball game. No one really gives a shit drink who wins, who loses, except for the hardcore fans, which there always are, but they just want to have a good time in the good weather with the good food. That's all they care about. Like uh, you can't be like for meeting people, just saying hello to a friendly person. You'll never meet again. It's, it's the best atmosphere to just rejuvenate, and, and bring, bring, bring love back in your community. Just go to a baseball game, whether it be local, regional, professional, you name it, doesn't matter. Soccer is a close second, in my opinion, just because it's me. But baseball, you can't beat it. And it's just, it just brings that camaraderie back with your, within your own community. So that, that, that's what I love most about the game. Bill, that All right. was a good answer. Thank you. Um, I'll go next. I mean, this is just a sarcastic <laughs> answer. I love that you can be um, – you can miss a ball 70% of the time and be very good. It's very yep. valid. Yep. That's very true. Baseball's a weird game that way, but that's it kind is. of another thing I love about yeah, it. You miss mm-hmm. the ball just 70% of the time, you're a really, really good player. Yeah, like if you're a football – if you're a quarterback, it's like, yep, I'm going to throw a ball and miss 70% of the time, but still win a, still win a Super You'd Bowl. You'd be it's Tim like, Tebow. Oh, I yeah. was just about to make the Tebow joke. Yeah, I know, but you're you're not wrong. But it's like if you did that in any other sport, the, the, you get you laughed off the field. Well, yeah. 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 We'll wait until you get, get to join a soccer career, but, yeah, we'll do that. There or was a baseball one game one. where Tim Tebow almost threw 70% in a playoff game against the Pittsburgh Steelers that he majestically won with 316 yards. So you're born to be a baseball player. Instead of being a tight end now or whatever the hell he's going to be, come play shortstop. Who cares? <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. For a little bit as an outfielder. <laughs> Dalton, man, um, I think I love how inclusive the game is. Not only for mm. its fans, but also for its players. Players. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at 
all the backgrounds these people come from. I mean, mm-hmm. for example, Mike Lansing, born in Rollins, Wyoming. What the hell? How does someone yeah, from Rollins. Rollins, Wyoming, end up in the game? And then, like, all the pictures of Altuve and Aaron mm-hmm. Judge standing next to each other. And mm-hmm. I just love how it doesn't matter – shape size where you came from what language you speak if you can pitch or you can hit a ball or you can field it that's all that matters mm-hmm. and exactly. then same going with the uh like the people who watch it i i don't think football is for everyone i don't no. think hockey is for everyone i don't think any of the other major sports are for everyone but i feel like everyone has a small piece within them where they love baseball and for most people, it's going to the game because, like yeah. Bill said, mm-hmm. the atmosphere is um, second to none. Mm-hmm. Matthew? Yes, Can sorry. I... Sorry, I was, I was looking something up real quick. So mm-hmm. uh, I guess I'll get to my my answer. So I was going to say, like, uh, I've always been, uh, like, a pretty good baseball fan, not, like, overly obsessed or anything. But this is going to be completely random, but – Dalton, I have partially you to thank for kind of getting me fully invested in baseball again, whether it's just been this league or, you know, all of us going to the Cubs game or like, I was going to say, because all of, like, all of us since the day we all met at University of Wyoming, it was all fantasy football. And now, I mean, Mm -hmm. crap, what, eight, almost nine years later, we're all talking about fantasy baseball. God, it's been nine years. All together on baseball and so I've always like watched the Rockies and everything, but oh man, there's like just so many things I love about baseball. Like mm-hmm. if you guys need to cut me off, just go for it. But you know, it's uh-huh. like, it's that for me, it's that first excitement when you enter the stadium, just seeing how big the field is, how green it is and everything like that, you know, smelling the food. It's just like, wow. You know, it was like when you enter, you know, it's going to be a fun night with, you know, your Rockies fan and your team loses by 10 points or whatever. And, 10 rounds or whatever it is, but I don't know. One quote I always think of is, how can you not be romantic about baseball? But not <laughs> not in the, like, the weird sketchy way or anything like that. But Not that money ball way, yep. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know, just random things. Like, I, I mentioned a few on the uh, little uh, Google document that we have here was, uh, did you guys catch the Diamondbacks Twitter couple a few weeks ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just absolutely love that where this really nosy friend uh, DM the Diamondbacks being, can you check on my friend? He's on a date with this girl, like third row behind the dugout or something like that. That not only did they zoom in on him on the Jumbotron, but that they also like gave him a ball. Of, and they, they gave him a ball. They got the broadcasters mm-hmm. in on it too. Yeah. It's, so it's like, like only at a bait. You can't do that at an NFL game. No. And no, then, uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just agreeing with you. And then another really funny one I really liked was I, there's this all these random connections like Dalton was mentioning with Mike Lansing, just a Wyoming guy who went to Wichita State, coincidentally, just a little south of me and making the majors somehow and playing, you know, hitting the quickest cycle in major league history. And then uh, another really interesting one was, did you guys follow the, uh, the Bo Bichette home run like a week or two ago? Mm-hmm. At Maybe. Ah, that's okay. Yeah. So the really cool thing with that was, so he hit this absolute bomb over the green monster, but the building it hit happened to be the, uh, the gym that his dad, Dante Bichette, former Rocky, uh, he also played for the Red Sox, was working out at where he met Bo Bichette's mom. Mm -hmm. So just a weird random coincidence at Fenway Park of all places. So I don't know, just kind of stories like that. I just absolutely love about baseball. So absolutely. And and just like, you know, more memories to come either if it's, Dalton mm-hmm. and I in St. Louis, or Zachary and I attending a game down in Miami like we've always dreamed of, or maybe one day seeing Ryan Howard himself at, uh, I almost said Lincoln Financial, but. <laughs> the other one. Uh, yeah. Veteran Stadium number two, whatever it's called, but. I think, I think it's Citizen know. Bank now. It, it is yeah, Citizen it, Bank, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, that's it. I, I completely blinked on the name, so. So I think that was all I had for the America's pastime. Like, what what do we love about baseball? So, mm-hmm. do you guys want to go into the next part, or do you guys want to do your own thing? Or go ahead. Okay. You keep going. All on. right. What are your guys' favorite baseball movies? Hmm. 
I think the only one I've really gone back to over and over again, I, I honestly haven't watched a ton of baseball games um, mm -hmm. or baseball movies, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I've watched plenty of baseball games um, is Moneyball for me. That's what yeah. trips my trigger just because it mixes drama with real life events with Brad Pitt mm -hmm. with numbers. I've always been a numbers guy. You got to mm -hmm. have Brad Pitt in there too. Got to yeah, have Brad Pitt. Got to have no, that that's that's the same for me too. That's the only really one I've I've seen, but it's 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 been the go-to for sure. But I mean, I mean, filled the dreams. I've I've seen a bit of, but unfortunately, I fell asleep because I was drunk. But I mean, I like it as well. So the bit the bits that I saw. So <laughs> Bill gets drunk watching Moneyball. Wait, aren't you supposed to drink when you talk about stats? Is that is that how it goes? <laughs> I thought I that was know. the game. Yeah, I should start doing that, but. <laughs> Um, I really enjoy uh, Major League. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, I love um, what's the, what's the big dude's name when he's um like killing a chicken, killing a chicken in the um the um, oh man what's it called the their lock the dugout the dugout oh. yeah dugout like when he was doing like the, the rituals with the dead chicken. Um, <laughs> Um, but I'm just, gonna have to watch this. Charlie, yeah, yeah. You, you, you've oh, never seen Major League? No. Oh, mm. dude, like rent it on Amazon Prime, like right when this ends. It's dude, like the Charlie Sheen is ridiculous in this movie. It, okay. To let me some right. Sheen, not gonna lie. So, man, it's good. And, um, yeah, I, I enjoy that one. Um, I mean, everyone enjoys the Sandlot. Um, um, I think another funny one is Rookie of the Year. That one's pretty funny, too. Um, mm -hmm. That one takes place at Wrigley. Yeah. Does it? Yeah. I've heard Bull wow. Durham is worth a watch as well. Yes. I mean, I mm -hmm. do see it here on your list. Mm -hmm. Major League is probably one of my favorites, though. Mm -hmm. Bill? Wild thing. Oh, I, I, I said uh, same thing with you, the money ball. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. But, again, that's uh, just the only one I've seen. I think my second favorite baseball movie is actually a documentary. Funny enough, it was a made for YouTube documentary and it's called Ooh. the history of the Seattle Mariners. Ooh. It, it was done by uh, SB nation. Oh, and, I watched uh, that one. Yeah. Because John Boyce. Yep. I Ooh. love that. Check that out. I didn't know it's the three Mariners hours. almost got voted out of town. I did not realize yep. that. Yep, wow. it was uh, three and a half hours of pure enjoyment, especially if you're a nerd like me and you love numbers. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but every single one of these recommendations I've made from YouTube involves stats. Based off numbers, yeah. <laughs> well, um, let me see. I had one more topic, and I just lost my train of thought. Oh, my Matt, gosh. I mean, Matt's last one is Rocky's Rants, which is, we could fill a whole well, other hour I, I on that. I, so. didn't get, I didn't get to say mine. I, like, I know you guys see the list. Oh, sorry. I thought you fired it up. Go ahead. Oh, no. All right. Zach's like, just get this over with already. <laughs> <laughs> He's tired. He's an old man. Go ahead. He's man. an old man. 10 hours a day. A week on, than he is. And it's an hour later where I'm at. Mm, all right. Go ahead, so well, I'm going to go from five all the way down to number one. So my number five one, just because I love cheesy, cheesy nineties movies is angels in the outfield. And I just love mm. the whole story behind it where, you know, suddenly Matthew McConaughey is being picked up midair and catch catching baseballs or <laughs> helping former pitchers do a lot better, even though they have a painkiller problem, stuff like that. <laughs> so I absolutely, and it's also, uh, who's that young actor? Oh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, very young hymns really? in that movie. So mm. absolutely love that one. Mm -hmm. huh. Number four, what? Um, are you recording? Yeah. Oh, it's not showing it on mine. That's why I was, I was curious. Sorry, go ahead, Matthew. All right. Yeah, it says recording on mine. All right. Oh, same. Okay. So I might not be. Oh, that's all right. Go ahead, Matt. All right. I'll number four, I have Bull Durham, which I know it's kind of a romantic <laughs> sports movie, but I mean, it's Kevin Costner in his prime. And then, uh, oh, Susan yeah, Kevin Costner. Too, and then the guy mm -hmm. from, uh, uh, I forgot. Oh, Tim Robbins. I don't, I don't know which movie I was going to mention in, but Bull Durham's also a good one about, kind of a journeyman uh minor league catcher and this uh i'll call her a groupie but it's kind of an entertaining <laughs> movie there's a quote about how 
she loves the religion of baseball about how there's both 127 stitches in a baseball, but there's also 127 beads in a Catholic rosary. So the connection there, it was kind of coincidental, kind of cool. That's great. That's Number great. Number three, I agree with Zachary. Major League is also not only a great sports movie, but just absolutely hilarious. Just Charlie Sheen. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I always like the Joe Boo quotes with Pedro Serrano are absolutely hilarious too. And just the kind of the ridiculousness of this like terrible team that, goes on to spite their owner and win it all. Mm -hmm. Number two, I love for a lot of reasons, but Sandlot, of course, just because it kind of brings back like nostalgia of, you know, grow, you know, when you're growing up and playing, you know, little league and all that with your buddies. And yeah, of course, everybody's crush growing up, Wendy Peppercorn. <laughs> Maybe that's just Zach and I, but I don't know. One of my favorite scenes of that movie is when they go to the carnival and they have the they they break break out the big chaw and they all oh, yeah. put a put a big uh put a big old dip in and get on this <laughs> the uh, one of the Ferris wheel ride or not Ferris wheels but one of the carnival rides and just like immediately just hurl everywhere. It's just, <laughs> great stuff. Mm -hmm. thought they were so cool with that chew, but yep, kids. Peer pressure will get you. Don't do it. Don't chew. Don't smoke unless you're cool like Dalton. So, hey. <laughs> and this is as a teacher warning everybody: don't do chew, or you will end up in the place where Dalton works. That's also true. All right. I'm just joking. Just ignore Dal everything I say. Dalton to beat your butt. That was not. Mm. That was not a diss at Dalton. That was a diss at uh, the people in there. Yeah. <laughs> Dalton, fact, cool. Dalton. Bill, did right. you ever smoke cigarettes with me? I did. When I, I think drunk. you did. I, when I, I think, drunk I think every during time. freshman year we were smoking every cigarettes. Oh yeah, I learned. Like idiots. I don't yep. know about oh, you, yeah. Zach. Were you thinking about that cigar bar in Chicago? That was the first thing I. Thought. Oh my god. <laughs> but see, see, hold on, wait. Cigars are different than cigarettes. Cigarettes are unhealthy. Cigars are healthy. They help no, prolong life. They are. Not if you do them every day, but every once, like once a week, you're all right. You're all they're right. they're they're good for a happy life, but they're not healthy. All right, man. What's your number one movie? All right. Thank you for that, Zachary. And my <laughs> last one. Z.O.G. Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. it's, it's corny. It's the 90s, but I mean, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just the nostalgia of like the old baseball players coming out of the cornfield and then Kevin Costner having a, having a catch with his dad, even though he had a father issues growing up but the best part by far was uh james Earl jones has this monologue where he's just like people will come to people will come i'm gonna try to do this memorize as best as i can people will come ray they'll come to iowa for reasons i can't even fathom they'll turn up your driveway not knowing what not sure why they're doing it they'll arrive at your door innocent as children and they'll walk off to the bleachers and sit in their short sleeves on a perfect afternoon and they'll watch the game as they'll be as dip, as they dip themselves in magic waters, and the memory will so be so thick they'll have to brush them off their faces. It's a lot better. James Earl Jones does it a lot better than that. <laughs> but I, just that scene, it's just great, James Earl Jones, and then just every any everything and anything that you love about the game of baseball. It's just like yeah, that perfectly described mm -hmm. it right there. And for the final topic of the night, before we say goodbye, I found this section on baseball reference where it talks about players based on birthplace. Uh, now, two guys stand out. Um, one, there was a pitcher born in 1960 in Casper, Wyoming. He was drafted by the Cincinnati Reds and played his entire career for the Cincinnati Reds. That was 12 years. Um, he played during the Big Red Machine era. Oh, wow. And he had 1,000 strikeouts. So that's pretty cool. That's real 1990 cool. World Series. Wow. His name was Tom Browning. Oh, Bill, have, or Matt, you knew the answer, didn't you? I did, but I, only because of a personal connection. So go ahead. Matt Day, the granddaughter. Red machine. My dad was walking around the Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, and guess who he met? Damn. Tom Browning. No, better, oh. way better. Joe Morgan. Way better. Tom McDonald. No, I don't know. Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Wow. Wow. 
So my dad was talking about how his, his son Matthew is a big baseball fan and they're from Wyoming. And he's like, one of my best decisions I made as a manager was telling them to draft Tom Browning. I was just like, oh, that is so cool. So <laughs> when, I, when I left for just a second, I was just going to show off my Pete Rose autographed baseball, calling me a great fan. Oh, hey, that's awesome. That's sick. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, when you, cool. when you got, when I, like right when you were mentioning him, I was like, oh, hold on, I gotta go get, I gotta go get my baseball. That's awesome! Wow. And, and the other notable player that we didn't talk about is John Buck, catcher. Oh, catcher, yep. K- uh, Kansas City Reds, along with a bunch of, or Kansas City Reds, Kansas City Royals, along with a bunch of <laughs> other uh, teams. He has one All Star, but what makes him interesting is he has the most home runs out of any wyoming born player oh wow 134 how close is nemo uh how many what rbis home runs home runs mm-hmm. nemo not- has 40 he's nowhere close never mind he might he could do less. it wow. um nemo of course was born in cheyenne john buck mm-hmm. was born in Kemmerer. Really? Oh, of all damn. places. Damn. Camera. Let's see. He went to high school in Taylorsville, Utah. He's drafted by the Houston Astros in the seventh round. Damn. Debuted in 2004. Had a 10-year career. Not bad. Not bad indeed. No. Man, I wonder what his advanced catcher stats look like. I wonder if he was a Jeff Mathis or not for lasting that long in the show. So before we put everyone to sleep and Dalton gets in the statistics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had another sentence there, Bill. Yeah, I didn't. There... I didn't. I the oh. didn't. Uh... Oh, okay. So, uh, <laughs> all right, I got you. I still got a well, pack. This is going to be bad. Anyway. That actually watches the YouTube video, Dalton did not record the second half of the podcast. Um, do we'll you... figure that out. Do you have a – I do have the audio. I can send you to probably the MP4. Yep. I'm just going to yeah. need you to send me the full audio. Um, mm-hmm. Any update on the iTunes? Oh, yes. iTunes. I left you guys on that cliffhanger. For, for, yeah, for people waiting till now, appreciate you listening till then. I appreciate it. We love you to death. Please like. Let me see. Check subscribe my email and share. now. Tim Apple, we're coming for you. No, no, no news. What? Let me let me do another search. Uh, no, no news. Let me uh, go to the interweb. Wait, so for the so for the people that don't know what's going on, what is going on? <laughs> so I uh, put in to have our podcast on Apple Podcast. Now the problem with that is that. Um, they have to accept said podcast Mm -hmm. to be part of the library. And with the um, current, like, sorry, I'm typing now. With the current, like, influx of podcasts and this becoming a a really, like, heavy thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, it takes a while for it to show up. So now Mm -hmm. I am. Checking right now. They have not gotten back to me yet. Mother fudgers. Let's see episodes. Um, holy shit. I think it says it's published. Really? Well, drink to both of that. Hold that on. We're... Wait Hold a on. minute. We can Drinking. do this all together. Everybody get your iPhone. Yeah, let's do it. What? Get your iPhone. Is it called Jim City Gridiron? Yep. Go to Apple, I'm assuming. And then podcast. Wait, what are we looking it up on? What app? Apple Podcast. Apple Podcast. Is it round up podcast? I don't know. It's not really coming. I don't see it. I 
I might have just uh did you jinx it? I might have just jinxed it. Hold on. Oh no. I'm trying to read. It is called Gem City Gridiron Roundup. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking. Roundup one. I'm, I'm going to find this. I don't see anything. I was listening to Red Redline Radio back in the like back before we uh, went went to that uh, Cubs game a few years ago. So I was listening to Chris Bryant and the Bears and a bunch of random things. That was the last pod- podcast I listened to on there. I don't see it there, Dalton. Liars! You lied to me. I will never lie to you. It says they're all published. So. You know what they say, Dalton? It's not about the destination, but it's the way you get there. You just crapped out so bad, but I appreciate it. <laughs> Dig it. Um, Did you hear James City Gridiron Roundup? Hold on. Oh, okay. Hold on. I, I still have to submit for review. Okay. I will I will work I'll work on this in my spare time. How about that? Okay. But it, it appears that they've published every single video that I've ever done, which doesn't make sense because there's a shitload of third party content on there, but I checked this doesn't contain third party content. So you Bill, you're not gonna be able to find it. Um I will I don't uh, care. <laughs> I'm searching by name at this point. Damn. Anyway. Hey, um, what w- one big news in the NFL today? Um, um, Bill's boy, Kelvin Benjamin, uh, did sign um, finally. Um, but he did sign as a tight end. He did finally uh, heed Booger's uh, warning. Uh, he was one Popeye's biscuit away from being a tight end. Um, and he is classified as a tight end now. Oh, man. With the New York Giants. <gasps> Who Zach and Dalton will see in person. Yeah. If he makes the team. (laughs) Okay. He will make the team and Bill will draft him first overall. Damn straight, bud. So, something interesting just happened. What did you see? What happened, Kuh? I just hit uh, publish and then it something changed on the screen. So, Jim City Roundup, Jim City Gridiron Roundup, still doesn't pop up. Let's see if Siri can help. Jim City Gridiron Roundup. I got nothing. No, not up. Kansas. Do you have it as your name underneath, or, or is it no. just Gem City Gridiron Roundup? Well, it's got a picture of my face as the background. The picture with that you Matt with, took. with the with the mic and. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, we'll I'll find see it. if I can find it later. Mm-hmm. With that, does anybody have any closing thoughts? I believe this is we've reached the end. Um, I do got one thing. Oh. Uh, thank you to all the subscribers, followers, listen, listeners to our channel and all that. And Dalton, I will see you in about four days in St. Louis. Ooh. Hell yeah. One more uh, test. I think I have it because I have a podcast, Apple podcast link. By the way, Albert Pools is betting cleanup tonight. Yep, I saw that he flied out. It says can't connect right now. So maybe by tomorrow morning, the uh, podcast will be live. We will see. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, with that, uh, you guys all have a wonderful week. Matthew and I will be at a Cardinals Cubs game. I will not be wearing a Cubs hat because I would rather not have beer thrown on me. And uh, maybe we'll 
send a live feed from the game briefly to the uh, Facebook group. That'd be all right. That would be fun. That'd be cool. All righty. And with that, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye. Bye.